It's behind us now. He's exiting right now. Exiting at Balboa. He's right behind us, Jim. Now he's 9 o'clock. He's nine o'clock on surface streets. Should Heading back towards the freeway. Now he's going under the freeway. Underneath the 101 coming out on the other side. There you go. Right off the nose. For. This is a double homicide, double homicide suspect, possibly armed. Live on Telemundo and uh, Booth from NBC, we're ready to go. Chuck, Colleen, we have a very dangerous pursuit, and it is simply because of what this person is wanted for. I'm just hearing over the police scanner that this person is wanted for not one, but two murders. So a mur double murder suspect here on the run from the LAPD's Topanga Division. And to make matters worse, this suspect is believed to be armed. Let me tell you about some of the things that happened before uh, we started broadcasting our images here. There were two people originally in this green truck. The dr person who is currently driving, the homicide suspect, was the passenger. The person who was driving at one point jumped out of the car and that guy started running away. Meanwhile, the passenger, our suspect, took control of the vehicle and continued the pursuit. He is now driving southbound here on Balboa, approaching the 101 freeway, but he had actually just jumped off that 101 freeway a couple minutes ago, stayed on Balboa here for a little while, but it looks like he's trying to make his way back towards the 101 freeway from Balboa. Correct. Go exactly. So he is running just to the west of the Sepulveda Dam area. That's going to be our major landmark here through the area. And he's coming back up here to the 101 freeway. This may be his opportunity to get back on. So we'll see if he does just that. But that's the only freeway that we have heard him get on yet. Uh, and of course, he has been on surface streets as well. This is the LAPD's Topanga Division in pursuit. There are units directly behind this guy as well as as well as the helicopter overhead. And the suspect vehicle is currently just on the other side of this building. We will try to bring News Chopper 4 Alpha around to bring you images of that vehicle. But you can see one of the police cars just sticking out right there on the other side of this building. Again, still southbound here on Balboa, just north of the 101 freeway. Yeah, that's a very good point. We actually don't have any information um, as to the any uh, 
pardon me, we don't have any information about the other person who was in the vehicle, whether that person was a willing participant or not. But I, w I can tell you is that this person is believed to be armed. Uh, so taking that into consideration, it's unclear exactly what that other person's role may have been in this pursuit. Uh, but it, I can tell you that uh, a little while ago when I was listening to the scanner, I could hear that there were officers in the area who were looking for this, uh, for a possible homicide suspect in the West Valley area. And uh, while we were over another story in El Segundo, that is when we heard that the LAPD's Topanga Division was going in pursuit. So it appears that this is a suspect that they w were in surveillance of in the West Valley area, and they finally got uh, units behind it and tried to initiate a stop. And it is at that point that the suspect took off. Uh, he, in this case, he is headed uh, what is considered southbound, but some people would also call it eastbound. So he is making his way over towards uh, the 405 freeway. If he continues on uh, this path, he could eventually also get on to that southbound or northbound 405 if he so decides, or he can continue on the southbound 101. Very good question, Chuck. I was trying to figure out which homicide this suspect may be associated with, but at this point, that information hasn't been discussed on the scanner. All I heard is that this is, in fact, a double, double homicide suspect who is possibly armed. And something that did make the officers a little nervous was that they said that the suspect kept reaching for his waistband. So that, of course, is of concern considering that they believe he is armed. And because he is armed, the pit maneuver is out of the question. Uh, officers who are behind this guy have requested the ability to pit, and they were told by their watch commander that they do not have permission to pit because the suspect is armed. He has actually, and he's approaching the 405 split right now. So as you can see right there's the split, and it looks like he is setting up to go southbound 405 here, unless he makes a dramatic move here. Uh, and it looks like he, he may tr try to move over to the northbound side, but for now it looks like he is set up to go southbound 405. Yeah, that, that's exactly right. Yeah. You're exactly right, Colleen. Uh, let's see, he is setting up uh, for those right-hand lanes, and I can tell you that earlier he was on the freeway and he exited, so he's willing to go on surface streets if need be. But for now, it looks like he's going to continue southbound here, still in that number one lane. And I'm not really seeing too much in the way of traffic. I believe that some of the officers who are in the rear may be running a traffic break behind this pursuit, and that is why the traffic here looks so light. But continuing southbound here on the 405 freeway, if he continues heading in this direction, uh, some of the major landmarks that he's going to pass are going to be uh, the Getty Center off to the right of the screen, and then we will eventually have UCLA coming up on the left side of the screen. Yeah, speeds aren't too dramatic here. It looks like he's basically yielding to the uh, speed of the road. Yeah, he's got he's basically got no traffic up ahead. And uh, you can see that the other side of the freeway is very slow by comparison. So he's basically got a clear path at this point, continuing here in the slow lanes of the southbound 405, uh, coming up to Maholland Drive. Yeah, it's unclear exactly when the murder took
took place, or the murders, I should say, or in what area. But I can tell you just earlier when I was listening to uh, our police scanners back at Whiteman Airport, I did hear talk about some sort of surveillance or some sort of search in the West Valley area for a possible murder suspect. And while we were covering a separate story down in El Segundo, I started hearing that officers from the uh, Topanga Division actually were behind a uh, green pickup like the one we see here, and it was two undercover vehicles that were behind the vehicle. So it appears that those two undercover vehicles may have been working some sort of surveillance of this suspect, and they got to the point where they decided they could try to light this guy up with some uh, with some units with, uh, with the uh, light system, and when they did, the suspect took off. At that point, there were two people in the vehicle. The suspect was the passenger, and the, pers the pursuit began, the person who was driving the vehicle at some point jumps out and then the passenger takes over the vehicle and that's the person who is driving now and that is the person that the police department is describing as this double homicide suspect. Yeah, getting close to the Skirball Center, continuing southbound here on the 405 freeway. In regards to the murders themselves, we don't have any information as to who those victims may be or where this murder may have taken place. Uh, but I can tell you that it appears that the LAPD officers uh, got eyes on this guy earlier in the day, followed him for a little while, and that is when the pursuit began. But I'm continuing to listen to the police scanner to see if they if they give us any more information about the, the murder itself or murders. Uh, and as soon as I hear any more information on that, I will, of course, give that to you. But for now, the suspect continues southbound here on the 405 freeway. He is on 2nd Street in Santa Monica, so essentially downtown Santa Monica. He was on the 10 freeway. He, he picked up the 10 West from the 405 South. That's where we last saw him. And he took that 10 West, exited at 4th Street, and is now on surface streets here in the Santa Monica area. And uh, that, of course, makes us a little bit more nervous because now we're bringing pedestrians into the mix, whereas before he was just on the freeway, and that was not something he had to contend with. But now making his way here, through surface streets on uh, Ocean Avenue now, just turned uh, off of, uh, I believe that was Broadway from Ocean Avenue. You see how close that bicyclist is as he continues southbound here, making his way back towards the direction of the 10 freeway. We'll see if he tries to pick it up yet again, but units close behind, and you see him there weaving in and out of traffic, weaving through those cones. Oh, just hit that construction cone there and continuing southbound here on Ocean Avenue. We are yet to hear any additional information regarding him exactly or the crimes that he may have committed, but I'll just recap real quick. What we do know about him is that he was in this pickup with another person. That other person was driving, and that person wanted no part to, uh, of this pursuit. They jumped out of the car, and then the passenger took over the vehicle, and that is the suspect who is driving the vehicle now. And what we heard was that he is wanted for not one, but two murders. It is unclear what inf what the information may be about about those two murders themselves, but the other information that we have about him is that he is believed to be armed, and it is for that reason that the LAPD has not been granted permission to, to do a pit maneuver, rather. It would be just too dangerous. He's currently on 3rd Street. He just turned off of Pacific. So this is what you can call a residential area in Santa Monica. I don't see them doing anything up or ahead per se, but uh, they may be stop uh, stopping traffic right behind him just to let the pursuit go by. But in 
it's really difficult to tell where he may head to next. So because of that, it's difficult to put units up ahead. I can tell you that when he was on the freeway, it was a little bit different. They knew the general direction that he was going at, and they were able to stage units up ahead on the freeway, as well as run, run traffic brakes behind him. But in this situation, he just randomly chose to get off at, at 4th Street from the 10th freeway and uh, is now making his way here through the streets of Santa Monica but now he's on a major street he's on Pico headed uh, on Pico Boulevard let me get you the next cross here and uh, I got turned around there but it's gonna be 6th Street so Pico and 6th is exactly where he's at just kind of weaving in and out of traffic he, it seems like he may be looking for a way to get back on the freeway because we know that he has been on this freeway from or on the freeways rather for most of the duration of this pursuit it looks like he prefers to be on freeways so he may be trying to weave his way back towards the freeway but at this point it's unclear if this is an area that he is familiar with and he may be having a difficult time finding that 10 freeway Yeah, he's pulling into the 7-Eleven here on the corner, and it's unclear if he just did that to try to get around some of that slower-moving traffic, or if this is where he's going to bring this all to an end. We'll see if he uh, hangs a right here. It's just going to get him back onto Pico, and it looks like that's exactly what he's going to try to do here, just basically use the lot to get through. And sure enough, going to be getting back onto Pico. It looks like he's trying to go the wrong way, though, and the cars are going to move out of the way just enough for him to get by. So he's continuing here on Pico Boulevard, which uh, for those of you who are not too familiar with the area, it runs just south of the 10 freeway, he, still in the Santa Monica area. So this is going to be right off the coast. And I can tell you that his speeds are very slow at this point. I'm clocking him maybe at around 20, 25 miles an hour. So speed hasn't really been a factor during this pursuit. But as you said, Colleen, what is so dangerous is what this guy is wanted for. Not one, but two murders, and he is believed to be armed. And the officers who are right behind him have said over the police scanner that they see him reaching for his waistband, which of course makes all of us very nervous. Ideally, they don't want to do anything that would agitate the driver anymore. So the ideal situation would be just to follow this guy until he decides to stop on his own and gives up or his car becomes disabled. They don't want to do anything that's going to make him even more mad, drive even faster. In this case, we know that he's got that or we know that he possibly is armed. Uh, so because of that, they're not going to try a pit. They wouldn't want to spin the vehicle around and then have them be facing one of the officers and of course, so they wouldn't want anything like that. They could try, possibly try the spike strips. I haven't heard them say where they're going to deploy any in the area, but that's still a possibility. Um, of course, if they did that, then the officers who would be deploying those spike strips would be awfully close to the vehicle at that point, which, of course, they don't want to endanger any of their officers or any of the general public. So to answer your question, the ideal situation is just to wait this thing out. Uh, don't agitate the driver. Let him come to a stop on his own terms and take him safely into custody.
and it looks like he just missed his opportunity there, Colleen. He was He's on 20th Street, and it looks like that was his chance to get back onto the 10. I saw the uh, on-ramp there, but he went right by it. It was off to his right. He may not have seen it, and is uh, instead turning here onto Olympic Boulevard, another major street here through the area. So he is currently driving on Olympic, coming away from 20th Street. Yeah, so there's a, yeah, it's the train that runs through here. And uh, I'm trying to get a, a better gauge of where he is exactly. He's right off our nose. And it looks like he is coming uh, um, away from the freeway. I have him there right at the intersection there, just on the other side of the train tracks. You see him uh, coming there on the other side. Again, this is going to be Olympic Boulevard. He still has an opportunity to get on the 10. He's basically running parallel to the uh, 10 freeway. So at any point, he can... Uh, Turn off of uh, turn off of Olympic and turn on to any of these other uh, cross streets, any of the north souths, and try to get back on the freeway. But for now, continuing here on Olympic Boulevard. Yeah, and. and to answer your question from before, he is headed eastbound. I've, I got my bearings now here. Headed eastbound here on Olympic Boulevard and still slow speeds running uh, through the intersection here, turning here onto Stewart Street, which is going to be a smaller street, Stewart Street, making a uh, northbound turn onto Stewart Street from Olympic. Those are all very good questions, and my first inclination would be that he is lost. This is a pursuit that started in the valley. Officers were working some sort of surveillance of this suspect in the San Fernando Valley, and then uh, he happened to have gotten on the 101 freeway, and then got on the 405 South, and then from there he took the 10. So he exited at 4th Street, so it's unclear whether he has any connection with the area, but by the way that he's driving, very slow, as you said, it almost looks like he's lost and looking for a way to get back on the freeway, but hasn't quite figured out how to do it. Yeah, he's on Colorado Avenue uh, and uh, making a turn here. I'll get you the street here in a moment but just turned off of Colorado Avenue. And as you can see on either side of the shot, it's a lot of apartment complexes. So definitely what you would call a residential area. And currently he's on a tree line street here that runs just off of Colorado, but he's gonna be coming up uh, to a major here. It's gonna be Broadway. So we'll see what direction he goes on Broadway. And it looks like he's going to be making a right-hand turn onto Broadway and gonna be continuing eastbound here. Oh, definitely. The, the 10 freeway is really not that far. Uh, he's uh, essentially just north of it. So if he picked up any of these north-south streets and headed south, uh, then uh, he would be able to get back on the 10 freeway. But if he continues driving in this direction, he could also pick up the 405. It's going to take him a little while, uh, but eventually he would cross uh, with the 405 freeway yet again. We believe that it is just one at this point. Initially, it was two, and then that second person we heard had basically abandoned the vehicle. They wanted nothing to do with this. They, they jumped out of the vehicle and took off running. It's unclear, though, if that person is in police custody. Even if they weren't involved, uh, the police are definitely still going to want to talk to that person. Uh, so I'm yet to hear any information as to whether that person has been taken into custody. But as far as we know, there is just one person and that being the driver, the homicide suspect, left in the vehicle. So this is going to be Santa Monica Boulevard, which of course is a 
very big uh, thoroughfare here through the area. He's just on the other side of that apartment complex, so we'll catch him here as he comes out here on the other side. But Santa Monica Boulevard with units close behind, and in my earlier shot, you saw the black and white helicopter that's going to be LAPD, who is keeping tabs on this guy from above. And that actually was not the, the helicopter that was over him earlier. The earlier helicopter pulled off, and now we have uh, this black and white helicopter from the LAPD following this pursuit here on Santa Monica Boulevard. I have to admit, it got a little quiet on the scanner uh, after he made his way southbound on the 405. And then we, of course, uh, had to take the long way around to be able to regain this pursuit. They, they got a little quiet about it, uh, basically just calling out streets at this point, but really not revealing too much more in the way of information as to who this guy may be, what he may be wanted for. We, of course, initially heard that he was wanted for a double homicide, and we're still working. I know my assignment desk uh, here at NBC is, is working uh, diligently to work the phones and try to figure out exactly uh, any more information about those two homicides, where they may have taken place, who those victims may be. But at this point, I, I can't uh, give you any more information about uh, the original want. Uh, but, of course, uh, we continue to follow this pursuit here on surface streets, turning uh, just crossed over Iowa Avenue on another little street called Colby Avenue. It's unclear um, if any of the officers may have seen a weapon, but that was what we originally heard is that they believe to be armed or that he be that they believe he is armed. It is unclear if perhaps he used a weapon during the commission of the murders and then that, that would be a way for them to basically connect that he may be armed. Uh, they did mention that he was reaching for his waistband though, which of course uh, um, made them a little bit nervous of course and it was at that point that they said that no pit maneuver would be allowed there was one officer that was right behind the suspect who said can i perform a pit am i am i pit approved and uh, the watch commander said no because this guy is armed it's just too dangerous and they can't risk it Yeah, there they are. I've been uh, holding a tight shot there of the suspect vehicle, uh, but I can tell you that there are at least four, if not five units directly behind this guy. And uh, he's making another turn here off of Iowa onto a smaller street called Corinth. And again, it seems like this guy is lost. These are all very small streets. Uh, I can't imagine that he, he is very familiar with them, but he's now in the West LA area, not too far from the 405 freeway. That's why we're starting to see some of that marine layer move back into our shot. But we, of course, will try to stay on top of this as long as we can as he makes a turn here onto Santa Monica Boulevard from Current. He's, uh, he's basically headed away from it now, which uh, is not what he should uh, do if he wants to get back on that 405 freeway. Uh, it seems like he was looking for a way to get back on the freeway. He didn't find it, so he made a turn there and is now going to go back westbound Santa Monica, back towards the ocean. Yeah, we're still uh, we're uh, definitely uh, further to the ocean than we are to the 405 freeway. So he may be looking for, yeah, he may be looking for a way to get onto the freeway. That's kind of what I'm feeling uh, from uh, the way that he keeps making all these random turns. Continuing westbound Santa Monica through Barrington, very slow speed. It's approximately 20 miles an hour. You can see that he really isn't. Uh, going ev very much faster than these other vehicles because there is uh, a, a bit of congestion here through the area as is to be expected at this time of the day on Santa Monica Boulevard. But continuing westbound here. Yes, it still is the LAPD. 
It still is the LAPD, and, and we I'm looking on their cruisers there, and I'm reading the numbers because the, the lower number indicates which division it is, and I'm seeing that the lead unit is, in fact, Topanga Division, and the unit behind the Topanga Division unit is going to be West Valley. So we still have units here that are from the San Fernando Valley following this guy here on the west side. So it wouldn't be out of the question for units from the LAPD's uh, West LA Division or even Pacific division to take over the pursuit because they're going to be more familiar with this area. So they're going to know where the cul-de-sacs are, where to set up a spike strip. So in a situation like this, uh, I mean, LAPD, they're all one big family. They can use any division they need to for a pursuit like this. It would just make more sense for these uh, San Fernando Valley uh, units to be replaced by local units. But for now, I am uh, not hearing about them taking over, but I am hearing that some of those West LA division units may be setting up spike strips in the area. And of course, I won't reveal exactly where because of course we wouldn't want anyone who, who may be listening to our, our broadcast to give this guy any type of heads up about those spike strips, but I can tell you that they are now in the mix. Yeah, he's yeah, definitely getting closer. He's already past Bundy, continuing here on Santa Monica. I'll try to get you the next cross here. There's one coming up right here. It's going to be Yale Street, which is going to be a smaller street, but he's back uh, towards the Santa Monica area for sure. They definitely could get involved. Uh, it would be a matter of LAPD asking for them to take over. And at this point, I have not heard them ask for that request. I have heard them, though, ask for the West LA divisions to get involved. And they could also ask Pacific divisions to get involved. Go ahead. Colleen, I... I missed that last group of people, but look at these people there. They are definitely out on the sidewalk documenting this uh, on their phones. And uh, of course, that is not what the police would like you to do. They'd like you to stay inside where it's safer. Uh, but this pursuit has been going on for long enough that people are starting to hear about it. And people who are in the area are hearing, hey, this is going by my street. Let me step outside and take a look. Not as, that is definitely not what the police want. I think in part he's being fortunate, but he's also being very tactical about it because when he does come up to slowing, like we saw when he went into that parking lot for the 7-Eleven earlier, he, he basically just went into that lot to dodge some traffic. So he definitely doesn't want to get stuck in traffic, and that's why we've seen him do some of these uh, interesting maneuvers, to say the least. So he's definitely tried to dodge traffic, but in terms of officers getting ahead of this, it doesn't appear that they're clearing traffic for him. Uh, we're essentially uh, coming right up to it, or we may be in it. He's uh, on 60, or rather, he's on Santa Monica crossing six, 16th Street, 16. So he's, he's headed back into the Santa Monica area. Yeah, he actually just made a turn northbound, so it's... Yeah, so he's currently on uh, 14th. He just 
He just crossed to Wilshire and is now on California or is still on 14th, but he just passed California Avenue. And I'm hearing some more information on the scanner. They're talking about if this person abandons the vehicle and starts running for it, they're starting to uh, figure out how they're going to handle that if that does happen. And I'm also hearing that the suspect is actually on the phone. So the suspect has a cell phone and is in communication with the LAPD watch commander. So th that suspect could be talking about the, or how to give up with the authorities. So we may see this come to an end shortly, hopefully, uh, but I can tell you that that is new information. The suspect is in fact in contact with authorities. That's exactly right, Chuck. What's our fuel, Jim? Colleen, my pilot is actually uh, figuring that out right now, and I will give you an answer here. In we still have about 45 minutes to an hour left of fuel, but fortunately, uh, even if we run out of fuel, we do have Galavis in your chopper for Bravo ready to take over this pursuit if it goes any further than those 45 minutes. But I can tell you that, Chuck, you were right about the suspect being on Montana. He is, in fact, headed eastbound on Montana Avenue, just crossing over 19th Street. Yeah, pretty much a slow speed pursuit. The fastest uh, speeds were, of course, when he was on the freeway. He was on the 101 south, then he got on the 405 south, and then on the 10 west, and that's basically when he was the fastest. But in terms of surface street speeds, he's maintained about 25 to 25, or rather 20 to 25 miles an hour. So speed ha hasn't really been a factor in this pursuit. But of course, this is a very dangerous pursuit because this suspect is wanted in connection with a double homicide. And and authorities believe that he may be armed. It was the LAPD's Topanga Division that originally tried to pull this suspect over after working some type of surveillance of the suspect. Officers tried to pull the suspect over, and at that point, there were two people in the car. There was the driver and the passenger. The driver wanted nothing to do with this, and he ran for it. But then the suspect took over the vehicle, and it is the, su uh, the uh, rather, rather, it's the passenger who took over the vehicle, and that passenger is now the suspect who is driving this vehicle here in the Santa Monica area, continuing eastbound on Montana. He has. He has been talking to the watch commander of the Topanga Division station, and it is t the Topanga Division of the LAPD that originally tried to pull him over. So he is in communication with the watch commander. Of course, we cannot listen into that conversation, so we don't know exactly what is being said, but hopefully what is being discussed is a way for him to give up peacefully. That would be the ideal situation, because as we talked about before, in a situation like this where the suspect is armed, there's 
little that the officers can do because they don't want to do anything that will agitate the driver and endanger them or the general public. So the ideal situation is to just have this guy give up voluntarily on his own and in a peaceful manner. But for now, it looks like a, whatever conversation he is having with the watch commander hasn't led him to stop continuing here on Montana Avenue, still uh, in the Santa Monica area. Yeah, slowing down even more. So he's still probably at about 15 miles an hour, and now he's going to turn right towards us here on a, a what I would call a very small street. It's called Grenta, Gretna Green Way. So a small street here, just just on the south side. There definitely is the possibility that there may be a cul-de-sac coming up. I don't want to widen out the shot too much uh, out of fear that I'll lose him here under the trees. But I can tell you that a lot of the streets here in the area are very windy. And uh, there are definitely some cul-de-sacs in the area. So if he makes the wrong turn, that could be it for him. But continuing here southbound on Gretna Greenway, uh, just south of the Brentwood Country Club. Yeah, another little side street called Mayfield Avenue. So definitely a residential area. I can't imagine that the suspect is familiar with this area considering where the pursuit began all the way in the San Fernando Valley in the LAPD's Topanga Division, which is essentially the west side of the San Fernando Valley. And he has traversed a number of freeways, ending up here now uh, near the Brentwood Country Club, uh, making a turn here onto uh, Bundy Drive. They would ideally just want to bring this to a stop, and at that point, they would clear the vehicles that are in the way, if any, so that there isn't any type of crossfire situation or anything like that where any civilians would be in danger. Uh, so whatever communication they are having currently with him uh, on his cell phone uh, hasn't led him to stop. But yeah, creeping along here and... Yeah, turning into a parking lot, this may be it for him here. Yeah, or this may be the spot that he decided he will bring this to an end. We hope that is it. Just on the other side of this building here, we'll bring a new shopper for Alpha around. He's just on the other side here. There, Unfortunately, there are a lot of pedestrians, a lot of people out here. So I, uh, we'll see if this is where it comes to an end. Uh, and if, if that is... I'm, yeah, I'm trying to figure out. It is the Ralphs, actually. Yeah, you're, you're right, Chuck. It, it, yeah, it is the, the Ralphs, and he's just on the front side of it. So uh, my pilot, Jim Pollard, is bringing News Chopper 4 Alpha around so that we can see the front of the Ralphs here. It's going to be to our 9 o'clock, uh, Jim. And I actually see some of them running out of the way, yeah. This is perfect, Jim. What they're going to have the suspect do is throw the keys out first 
and then they will have the suspect open his door and put his hands up, spread his legs wide, and then either drop to the ground or walk back towards him. And that is exactly what he's doing. He appears to be complying fully with the commands of the police. And you see the police dog there waiting in case this guy decides to run for it. But he's just on the other side of that pole here. He's being asked to sidestep a little bit. And what we will see next is one team of officers will move towards the suspect and they will handcuff him, uh, after which they will uh, conduct a cursory search to make sure that there is nothing on his person that could potentially harm them. Again, we heard that this guy may be armed, so that is definitely something that they're going to be looking for. And a secondary team of officers will approach the vehicle and make sure that there are, in fact, no other suspects inside. Jim, can we move a little bit to the left? Passenger side. Yeah. That's exactly it, Colleen. The initial report that we had heard was that there were just two people inside and one had ran for it at the beginning of the pursuit, but apparently there were three. It was just one person that ran initially. The other two remained in the car during the course of the pursuit, but the team of officers will approach the vehicle to make sure that there is, in fact, nobody else inside. They're going to take a quick look and confirm that, but as you can see, both the driver and the passenger now waiting there on the pavement to be taken into custody. Yeah, no problem, Chuck. Yeah, we have the, the driver there who is wearing the gray shirt, and we have this, the passenger there in the black shirt. And I can tell you that that team of officers already moved to the vehicle. They cleared it. Nobody else inside. And now both of these suspects will be taken into custody. That's really interesting. Yeah, it's really interesting. I mean, yeah. It, there is the possibility that the driver wasn't the homicide suspect. It could be the passenger. That's uh, still all very unclear because uh, all we heard from the initial information was that there was a murder suspect in the vehicle. We, of course, thought that there was only one person inside, so we deducted that that would be the driver. But now that we see that there is a passenger, there's a possibility that it is the passenger who was the original murder suspect. Subscribe here. He slams into that car, he goes across the dirt! 